Hi everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. Our uh, next lesson, the fifth lesson in flight instruments on the magnetic compass. From your earlier lessons on air law, you should recall that the magnetic compass is a required instrument on board the aircraft. Every aircraft from a simple Piper Cub all the way to the most advanced jet aircraft all have magnetic compasses and they all work on the same principle. Obviously, the Earth has a magnetic field and a magnetic north pole. The magnet inside the magnetic compass aligns with the Earth's magnetic flux lines. So here we have how a compass looks like on the left side and on the right side. We can just look how it is constructed. We have the magnet with the uh, with the the dials and floating on top. And inside there is a fluid uh, chamber, uh, so it can move readily. There is a lens and uh, that you can read the compass through. There are also some compensating screws and a compensating magnet. These are only uh, touched by aircraft maintenance engineers when they are calibrating the magnetic compass to account for external magnetic fields uh, caused by, let's say, the engine's magnetos or radios. Let's talk about some peculiarities of the magnetic compass. We have something called magnetic dip. And because the Earth's uh, magnetic uh, flux lines are more vertical near the poles than they are at the equator, the magnet inside the compass will tend to dip more towards the poles compared to at the equator. There are a number of compass errors. The compass only displays an accurate heading when it is in straight and level flight. The first of these errors that we will discuss is the northerly turning error. When you're on turns to or from the north, the compass will lag in a turn. And on turns to and from the south, the compass will lead. The reason for this is quite complex, but uh, could be solved if we resolve the vectors, the result of magnetic dip and centripetal force. As you can see here, uh, let's say on the left, this aircraft is heading north and starts a turn. There's a bit of magnetic dip, and then also because of the turn, it resists the turning of the compass, so it will lag. On the right side, turns to and from the south, the magnetic dip uh, is the same way, but their turn of the compass would be clockwise, making the compass lead on a turn to and from the south. Acceleration errors occur or are most noticeable on east and west heading. On acceleration, the compass will tend to turn to the north. On a deceleration, the compass will tend to turn to the south. The way to remember this is the acronym ANDS, acceleration north, deceleration south. The reason for this is because the compass is dipping during the acceleration and it's hanging and there's also a magnetic force. So when you add up the vectors of these magnetic forces or of these uh, different forces, you will end up seeing that the compass will be forced to turn. Additionally, compasses have errors just inherent in their construction. These are called, this is called deviation. These errors are typically caused by the magnetic fields inside the aircraft, and they're typically less than two degrees. There's a compass correction card or a compass deviation card on board the aircraft, usually mounted right beside the compass. To find out what the deviation is, we just look at the deviation card. So for example, it says if we wanna go north, we should actually be going heading 005. Likewise, if we want to fly a heading of 240, we should actually be flying a heading of 230. Let's review. The magnetic compass aligns with the Earth's magnetic flux lines. Magnetic variation is the difference between true and magnetic north. Compass deviation is the difference between magnetic heading and compass heading. There are a number of errors in the compass. Magnetic dip is most pronounced near the poles where the flux lines are more vertical. Northerly turning error has the compass lag on turns to and from the north and lead on turns to and from the south. The compass on east-west heading will accelerate 
uh, or will turn to the north when accelerating and turn to the south when decelerating. Let's review some sample test questions. On a heading of north, the pilot suddenly decelerates. What is likely to happen to the compass? So you might be thinking, wait a minute, northerly turning error, deceleration, well, what happens? So remember, on a heading to or from the north, well, we're not turning here, so nothing's gonna happen there. And the, north, the acceleration deceleration errors occur uh, when we accelerate and decelerate on headings of east and west. So what is likely to happen? Will the compass swing to the north? Well, no, we're already on a heading of north. Will it swing to the south? Well, it might, but remember, it tends to swing to the south when we're on east and west headings. See, it will lag? Well, no, there's no turn. D, nothing. Correct answer is nothing. Reason for that is because we're not on an east and west heading. So there is no acceleration and deceleration error. Your compass indicates as shown below. You want to turn to a heading of 330. How are you going to turn? This is a pretty tricky question if you don't think about it. But if you just apply some common sense and understand which way is which, it should be pretty easy. However, pretty much every student will screw this up on their initial partial panel. Remember, you're looking at the back of the compass, not the front of the compass. So you want to turn to a heading of 330. You're heading north. Remember, 330 is 30 degrees to the left. The correct answer is A, 30 degrees to the left. You are turning from a heading of 030 to a heading 090. What error may you experience? So remember, we're in a turn. We're turning to or from, in this case, from roughly north. So that would be a northerly turning error. Remember, any turns to or from the north, the compass will lag. Correct answer, A. Disturbances caused by electrical fields in the aircraft cause A, variation. That's not correct because that's the difference between true north and magnetic north. B, deviation. That is the correct answer. C, magnetic flux. No, and D, magnetic dip. That is not correct. B is the correct answer. That concludes this lesson on the magnetic uh, Compass, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on our next lesson.